All right, we started uh, last last week, uh, started talking about this little book of Philemon and kind of uh, talked about the introduction to it and uh, why we really think it's an important uh, book of the Bible. Just a small book, if you remember, it was written by Paul as he was a prisoner in Rome and uh, written to a, another individual, uh, Christian brother, fellow laborer, uh, Paul calls him, in Colossae by the name of Philemon. And he wrote it on, the, on behalf of a slave or servant, whichever he might have been, uh, by the name of Onesimus. Onesimus had uh, ran away from Colossae and ran away from his master and he had ended up in, in Rome and, and ended up being a servant in the, in the house <clears throat> uh, where Paul was held prisoner and was converted and won to uh, a saving uh, knowledge of Jesus Christ by Paul the Apostle. And we also mentioned that unlike many churches today and individual soul winners today, Paul started out right away in trying to uh, help Onesimus to understand the, the uh, property of uh, restoration, restoration, making things right to people you have wronged. Uh, one thing God wants us to have is a good testimony among uh, the people in this world. Uh, we, are, we are born into the family of God by the Holy Spirit. We're written down in God's book and we become citizens of God's kingdom and of heaven. And uh, we may be citizens of this United States, but we are more the ambassadors of Jesus Christ to this world. We're really not uh, as important being citizens of the United States. I'm glad I am. I'm glad I'm not a citizen of uh, China or Cuba or or uh, any of those Muslim uh, countries like Afghanistan or Syria, any of that stuff. Glad I'm, I'm, I'm living in America. But our most important job is to be ambassadors of God's kingdom and to illustrate to this world what the kingdom of God is all about. And how great God is and how great his kingdom will be and how uh, necessary it is for them uh, to love a uh, God and love a uh, God's kingdom to come and to love the, the gospel, the good news. And to understand what God has done for us in sending his son to die for our sins and uh, going to hell and leaving our sins in the deepest portions there and bringing out the keys of death and hell and winning the victory and then offering to all mankind redemption and reconciliation uh, with God. But once we're reconciled with God, God wants us to reconcile ourselves with the world. Most people, when they are first saved, usually their lives are a mess. Mine was. Mine was a complete disaster. <laughs> and most people are in that shape. And God allows a sin and unrighteousness and, uh, for our, ourselves to make uh, bad decisions so that we might get into a place of, of uh, having to 
look to God for the help because there's no other place to look because we found no help in this world whatsoever to help us. So thanks be to God that he allows us uh, as a prodigal son to end up in the hog pen sometimes. Uh, today, though, I want to read uh, uh, a few more verses beginning in verse 1 down to, I believe, uh, verse 8 or 9, maybe. The Bible says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Althea and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in, his, in thy house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God making mention, mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward uh, the Lord Jesus and toward all, all saints, uh, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus for we have a great joy and consolation in thy love because of the bowels of the saints are refreshed excuse me by thee brother Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee, which is convenient, yet for love's sake, I'd rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also the prisoner of Jesus Christ. I want to uh, teach a little about and think a little about uh, about. Verse 4 today, prayer, the ministry of prayer. Uh, Paul said that he made mention of them always in his prayer. Take uh, and turn to the book of Ephesus or Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. And... Uh, Chapter 1 and verse 16. Here the word of God says, Cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. And then go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and uh, verse 2. Bible says, we give thanks to God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers. And then 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says here, we are bound to give thank to God always for you, brethren, as it is meet because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and uh, the charity of every one of you all towards each other aboundeth. Aboundeth. And then uh, flip back a little couple of pages to Philippians chapter 1. And verse 4, <clears throat> the Bible says, Always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first until uh, now. I, I wanted just to nail down the fact that uh, Paul had a ministry of prayer. Paul said that, that he had a burden, not just for uh, one church, or but he had a burden that, that he was the apostle 
to all the churches, all the churches that were in uh, that portion of uh, Eurasia and that he helped start and some he didn't help start because he was the apostle to the Gentiles. He was the very one, of course, you know that most of the New Testament uh, was written by Paul in the form of letters to individual churches, some that he planted himself and some that were planted to, uh, by others, but all uh, were a, a uh, burden to, to Paul. They all looked to Paul. He was the one uh, that was guiding them and ministering to them and writing to them and praying for them. I'll tell you, uh, the day that we're living in, we, we, we all need uh, to give ourselves to prayer more. Uh, one place God said, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And uh, I'll tell you, the church of today has almost forgotten the ministry of prayer. We open with prayer and we say grace over our, our food and things like that. But how many of us really have a ministry of prayer where we have a, a place that we go and pray to God and uh, name people by names? Uh, Daniel prayed in the morning and at lunch and, and in the evening three times a day. But God wants us to continue in prayer, which is to pray as we go, to make uh, God our co-traveler together. And I tell you, uh, thinking about my son, the, the thing that would help him the most is to love the Lord Jesus Christ more than any other person in this world. If we would learn to walk with God and uh, serve with God and uh, communicate with God continually, we would be much better service to God as Christians. And as, as, uh, as troubling it is that uh, today's church really has forgotten the ministry of restitution to those we have wronged once we are saved, the first thing God wants us to do is to make things right with those that our lives are entangled with, those that we have harmed and hurt and uh, uh, damaged by our negligence and uh, many times our ignorance. But God wants us to make it right. I mean, if, if, if you were living as married and not being married, Paul would have said the first thing you need to do is you need to get married or get right and, and uh, either separate from that girl and if there are children involved, then... I would have said, and I'm sure Paul would have, you need to go make things right uh, between you two in the eyes of the world and be married. Boy, we fail many times from telling uh, people that we're trying to win and many times uh, get them to pray for salvation by demanding that they make things right with those they have uh, damaged and harmed in their lives. First thing we need to do, that's what the prodigal son did. He went straight back and wanted to make things right with uh, his father. And uh, that's something that we forget, but not only have we forgotten that, we forget that we need to, there's power in prayer. I mean, some, some, some things you cannot do anything but pray because God has to work in them. 
in their lives. God has to reveal himself to them uh, by interceding in their lives, waking them up in the middle of the night, uh, giving them dreams that, that cause them to respond to uh, the thoughts of hell and salvation and uh, the end of their uh, misery. So many young people are killing themselves because they have no hope in this life. And sorry to say they are so twisted in their minds by public education, only God can help them uh, to have their thinking rightened or made right. Because they have to believe it. They have to uh, trust in it. And sorry to say, they probably don't trust in anybody uh, in today's society. So we need to pray. We need to pray more than we need to do any other thing. And one thing good about prayer, everybody can pray. You're not too old. You're not too young. You're not too uh, unhealthy. Everyone can pray. And that's the most powerful thing we have uh, in our uh, weaponry. Paul said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're spiritual to the pulling down of strongholds and bringing into captivity Every thought and imagination of the heart that exalted itself against God. How do you do that? You got to fight the spiritual battle in prayer. The greatest victories are won on your knees. Not that you have to be on your knees to pray. I pray in every situation and every it's nice when you can find a quiet place and and bow and pray and seek God's face that's good to have a prayer closet but to pray without ceasing is continually to be in contact with God for everything going on around us but Paul said he mentioned them all the time by name giving Number one, thanks. Boy, we need to pray that God would give us thankful hearts. We need to remember how lost we were. It, 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 it's hard for young people when they're saved in church. They've always been in church. They've never been in trouble really that way. To understand how much we need God to win victories over our troubles. And his promise all through Psalms, if you're praying, call unto me, I'll save you. This poor man cried, and the Lord saved him out of all his troubles. But a lot of people had, really don't experience troubles. So God has to trouble them. And God will answer your prayers. And we know that uh, that's the will of God. The Bible says that it, this is good and acceptable in the eyes of God that, that would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God wants everybody to be born again. He'll answer those prayers. And he knows how to answer those prayers and how to reach them in ways that we cannot uh, even uh, come close to producing in other people's lives. He was thankful for them and their uh, growth spiritually and how they were sending out uh, their faith uh, through their community. And uh, he learned about that not only from uh, from uh, the Holy Spirit, but also he, he looked and uh, searched and read and 
found out correspondence. He was in a in a very very center of government really to to have Roman soldiers around him and he would inquire I'm sure of things that were happening of uh, Philippi and things that were happening in uh, Colossae and and we find out information and it was free for people to come under Paul and uh, spend time with him and he could minister to them and uh, <clears throat> they could minister to him and he uh, would find out the information and things going on in the churches. Not only did he find out information from travelers and information coming from those churches, but even in this letter, he said, I'm going to send you, Tachias and others, to let you know what my uh, state is and how things are going for me here. He found out uh, things that were important to those churches and about those churches and things they were doing and giving thanks for all the good things. We could, it's good to put legs to our prayers. Paul put legs to his prayers. We sing that song, Count Your Blessings, but have you ever spent time in prayer thinking about all the blessings that God has poured on your life, thanking God for, uh, for good health and all those things that you could spend hours upon hours thanking God for that he is doing for us in this life. Boy, one thing with, that Americans are lacking is a thankful heart. We take everything for granted. Boy, if we lived in some of those other uh, <clears throat> countries, we, we would understand that. If you ever spent time in a third world country, you'll come back and appreciate America and the blessings of living in a free land and the blessings of God that he pours upon us. So he kept up with things and uh, he, he inquired and, and found ways and resources to find out what they needed. And sometimes we need to do that too. Find out not just from individuals, just from a, a prayer list, but from neighbors and other things. And, and uh, through the internet you can find out all kind of things. Some of it's even true. <laughs> Most of it isn't, but kind of helps guide you in what to pray for. Sometimes all we have, I, I thank God for Mary. She's adding to the prayer list what they're going through to give us information on what to pray for in individual lives that that are added to the prayer list besides just the name. Because sometimes names help us to call upon God to help them. God does know what they need, but it's better if we know what to pray for. God wants us to pray specifically for things so that we can praise God when he answers them. I think not only are we lacking in prayer in the church of today, but we're lacking in praise for answered prayer in churches today. I think this church is above most churches, but we all have room to improve. I've heard a lot of uh, rejoicing and uh, uh, prayer requests that get praise for a good answer, just like uh, Leanne this morning about the young lady. Boy, if you go through the book of Acts, I wish I had more time. I could spend three hours in our Sunday school class and never run out of things to say. But you can follow prayer uh, through the book of Acts and see in, in Acts 1.14, it said they met daily from house to house praying. Every day they met in homes and each other's place at the marketplace or wherever and they prayed 
continually that way and met continually that way. I mean, we, we, we quote Hebrews 10, 26 a lot, you know, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some is. And we, we not really, the church of today really aren't meeting, meeting more as more as you see the day approaching. Things are getting worse and worse and uh, there's more and more need of prayer and churches are meeting less and less. That's not what the Bible says. But it doesn't have to be in church. It could be anywhere. And uh, if you want to turn over to Acts, we'll spend just a couple of more minutes. Uh, the next place in Acts is Acts chapter 6. You can do this yourself and study it out. Acts chapter <clears throat> 6 verse 4. But we give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. That was the, the choosing of men to take their place, to wait on table so the apostles could continue in prayer and to continue in uh, Bible study, if you would. Then Acts 10, uh, 31 uh, is another place prayer is mentioned. Acts 10, verse 31 says, I immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, we all here present before God and to hear all things uh, that are commanded. I'm in the wrong verse. 31. I was reading 33. And uh, said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard. God heard a lost man's prayer. I've heard some uh, preachers say, God never hears lost people's prayer unless it's a prayer for salvation. Well, that's not true because Cornelius' prayers were heard by God. Because he wanted to find God, the God of the Jews, the God of the Bible. And God heard his prayers. They came up for a memorial before God. And then Acts 12, Acts chapter 12 and verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made with uh, out ceasing of the church unto God for him. And they prayed until they got an answer. And they didn't even believe it when they got the right answer. Girl goes to the door and Peter's at the door and she doesn't let him in. She runs back and said, you never believe who's at the door. <laughs> Peter was at the door. Boy, we don't really hold prayer high in this esteem. God expects us we're to pray Romans says to be instant in prayer instead of saying when somebody said will you pray for me for this and we say yeah I'll pray for you half the time or most of the time we forget to even pray we forget their name I do so I've made myself a habit when they say pray for me we do it right then I'll take their hand and I'll pray for them. I don't care where we're at. Be a good testimony. Be instant in prayer. And pray for all things, he said. Pray for all things. And to pray without ceasing. That's enough commandment about prayer for us to know God wants us to pray. Pray instantly pray continually and pray for all things no matter how small or how great my buddy uh, Ted Gardner and I, I used to pray for a parking spot when we went to work at uh, the power plant because they were hard to find you might do that when you go to Walmart Because God answered those prayers. And we got to rejoice in God before we went to work. Saying, God, 
thank you for this parking spot. Small thing, but God still heard it and answered. We all need to take Paul's example of prayer. Pray more. Make it a ministry more often and continually for all things that we can give God praise for. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the ministry of prayer and for the, really for the privilege to be able to come boldly before your throne, not in our own righteousness, so it doesn't matter if we were out of fellowship with you or in fellowship with you, in sin or out of sin. Your word says that you'll hear our prayers in time of trouble. You'll hear us when we pray. So we're thankful for that. I pray you teach us to pray. Help us to remember to pray. Help us to learn more effective ways to pray. Thank you for prayer and the privilege of it. Be with us in the rest of the services uh, today and bless as only you can. Help us to hear the Spirit of God speaking to us and Father, revive us again. We sure need it. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.